Okay, welcome back to the next video. So in the previous video, we set up our email template inside of Mailer Send. We've got a whole bunch of dynamic variables that we're now gonna need to populate and we're gonna use make.com to do that. So let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, before we get into it, I wanna explain how I typically include Mailer Send into my workflows. I am gonna be giving you a little bit of an overview of all of the different ways that I use Mailer Send on the Unicorn Factory specifically in a later video, but typically it all follows a particular workflow that is set up. So I won't create a separate workflow just to send out the emails. I'll typically just add the Mailer Send module at the end of a specific workflow. So let's say for example, uh, a new message has been sent to a free freelancer i have my workflows where all of the different things happen inside of Airtable and whatever other tool but then i typically end that workflow with the mailer send step now this will become a lot clearer in the next video when i go over a few examples but typically what i do is somewhere along the way there's a step where a record gets retrieved from Airtable, and the way that you can retrieve that from Airtable is by jumping in here and clicking on the get record option and what that will do is whenever the api call happens or the workflow runs it will then retrieve all of the information about a particular record and so let's say for example i want to forward on information um, that was submitted in the lead form to a freelancer i make the call to api with this um with this uh, record id and it will then automatically give me all of the fields that are in here and so it will show me all of the hidden fields and it will show me all of the um you know non-hidden fields and so then i can use the variables that i can retrieve from ear table in my mailer send step now just for the sake of simplicity i'm actually not going to add this ear table step and instead i'm going to fire through all of the information through a postman and a webhook now i'll show you quickly how that works i've configured a webhook that has a webhook url and then i'm going to run this module only and then when i jump in to um postman and hit the send button you can see that my webhook has been fired and it passes through all of the information that i submitted and now i can reuse these variables in the mailer send step so just to recap what i'm doing here just for the sake of this demo, I am using the information that I'm retrieving directly from the webhook. But when I am setting up these workflows, the mailer send module is actually part of other steps where I can actually retrieve all of the information from, which doesn't require me to do it this way. But it's easier to demo like this, so let's get into it. So what we want to do now is we want to send an email and so we're going to start off by adding our action step that we would add to the end of our workflow which is mailer send now luckily mailer send does have an integration with make.com they also have an integration with zapier in case that's what you're doing and so we can just use their native integration in order to set up this workflow so the first thing that you're going to need to do is to connect your account and then once you have connected your account you have to select um, whether or not you want to send an email based on a template now the answer to that in pretty much all cases is going to be yes because obviously we've designed a template that sits inside of mailer send all we need to do now is now select our template and so you can see here i've got a whole bunch of ones in there and you can see right at the bottom there's my um the one that I'm going to be using but alternatively if you wanted you could also map the template ID and the way that you can find the template ID is simply by um, going to the template that you are trying to work with and then just copying it straight out of here so you can just go in here you can copy it over and then you'll be good to go um, so I'm going to be using this template now what I want to do is I want to go through the process of a configuring all of the different fields and the first thing that you're going to need to do is to configure the email uh, from the sender so in that case that's going to be you and so because i'm sending it from the unicornfactory.ca domain i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to add my community at unicornfactory.ca domain so that means that when the recipient gets the email they'll see that that is the email address that it was sent from uh, i'm going to put the name that appears in the inbox as unicorn factory and then we can go ahead and we can start um, adding our first few dynamic variables so the first dynamic variable that we're going to add is the sender now 
what we're going to have to do in order to add the sender is to click on the add item button and then in here you've got two options first of all you can add the email address uh, of your freelancer and so this is something that you would uh, not freelancer whoever your type of customer is but this is the information that would sit inside of Airtable and so I will here use the email address that I can get from my record and then you can also add a name so if you have um, your customer's full name inside of Airtable you can then just add that in there as well but this part here is just option optional so I'm going to leave it empty and so this is all that's required if it's bold it's you have to populate it with something if it's not bold you don't have to okay next we have our subject line and now our subject line uh, can be a mixture of dynamic content and static content and so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to add something called a new job listing for you honor and so as you can see I've got here a dynamic variable that sits inside of static text and that just personalizes the emails again if you want you can also add your um you can also add an emoji which always helps and as soon as that is done that is going to be the subject line that's going to appear in the inbox of the freelancer the next thing that we want to do is we want to now start looking into what other fields we can populate so we're not going to need to work with attachments and we're also not going to need to work with tags but we are going to be working with variables now with variables there are a few things that you're going to have to do first of all and this one is important this is something that took me a little bit of time to figure out but it is important is you first of all have to specify who or what email these um, substitutes or these variables will apply to and so all you really need to do is just reuse the email address for the customer that's going to be receiving the email so this email address here has to match up with the email address that you're sending and then it will know ah oh, okay now I can map those fields now what we want to do is we want to add our substitutions and so basically what that means is now we're going to replace our variables with actual values and so what I typically like to do in this situation is I just like to go into the edit mode of my um, email and then just go through the variables one by one and so the first one is going to be the first name so I'm just going to copy everything from the dollar sign onwards so it's just first name and then I'm going to simply go in here and I'm going to paste it in here now what I'm stating here is whenever the variable first name is used inside of my template, then use another value. And so the value that I want to use here is my first name. So we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to select that. Now, I obviously have another variable that I want to add. So we're now going to go through it. And so the next variable that we're going to add is going to be our job role variable. And it turns out that I did not pass that through with the webhook. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put a placeholder in here for now. And then I am before we run this, I'll just replace it with a dynamic variable, but we'll just keep going for now. The next variable that we're going to have to replace is going to be the client location variable. So we're going to go in here, client location, and now I'm going to map the value that I'm getting from Airtable, Google Sheets, whatever you may be using to this variable. And so you can see here, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you just go through every variable one by one and you just map up the variable that fits. And so in this case, my client type is my enterprise, which is the dynamic variable that gets passed through. The next variable is the budget. So we're going to go ahead and add the budget as well. No problem. And sometimes you'll add a lot of variables. So I've got emails that have like 20 25 variables and so it's important to just go through them one by one so that you don't miss anything you will notice it when um you send the test email and you'll see if certain variables are missing because it will still have those tags attached to it but for now this is probably the best way to do it another thing that you can occasionally miss is the dynamic variables for links so in this case you definitely want to make sure that you are linking up your dynamic variable and so on the unicorn factory i'd populate this with a dynamic variable that sits inside of Airtable that links directly to a job listing um i've got a placeholder one for the unicorn factory here for now so that's all good and so now that i have mapped all of these fields all that's left to do is to specify the reply email now you don't have to set this but if you want to send an email from say connor at unicornfactory.ca but receive replies to community at unicornfactory.ca then this is how you would do it so whenever some people hit the reply button it will then automatically reply to that email that you specify in there 
So what we're going to do is I'm simply going to go ahead. I'm going to save this by hitting the OK button and always hit the save button on um, make, you know, because you never know. And then I am just also going to quickly add a new variable, which is going to be a job role. And I will just call this here social media marketing. And then I will quickly jump back in here, refire this module. So we're going to go in here, postman, send. And now you can see that my job role variable has been passed through and I can now map it up here. So let's go ahead and do that. So where it is, there it is. And now we're pretty much good to go. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to hit the play button and I am now going to fire the webhook. And so this would basically be when your automation runs, for example, when a new job is listed, when a lead is approved, those types of things. And so what I'll do is I'll hit the send button and you'll now see that my workflow runs and typically you can see if it worked or not just based on it all being green and it looks like all of the variables um, went into play it all replaced properly so what we're going to do now is we're going to see if I actually received the email and here we go email received we can see that all of the variables have been populated so you can see here it says Connor you can see it says social media marketing job you can see it says social media marketing freelancer budget all those types of things uh, I can also click on this link and that will then redirect me to my website and the link that I specified and so just like that you are now able to send out these templated emails with dynamic variables without a problem you just add it to whatever workflow is applicable here and you'll be good to go. And just like that, we've gone through the process of designing and building a mobile responsive email, and we've now populated it with dynamic variables using Make. And this is a super powerful tool to use. Uh, as you saw a few videos ago, I use this particular integration a lot. I've sent out about 100,000 emails, and it's just made the communication with freelancers and with customers so much easier. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go through both of these videos and set up a transaction email and then tie it into one of your workflows now in the next video we're going to be going over a use case where you might want to send out an email like this to multiple people at the same time and that's what I'm going to show you so I'll see you back for the next video